Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're in the Chinese WZ 305, and today I want to show you one hell of a spot, and also an enemy team that didn't really react in the way that would have been healthy for them. The WZ-305 is, for all intents and purposes, a um, ZSU-57-2, just at 0.3 battle rating higher. Why is that? It's a little bit heavier, it has a stronger engine, but aside from this, the main difference might be the proximity fuse high explosive shells, which makes it a better anti-aircraft um, vehicle as, you know, the ZSU-57-2, as, you know, close misses can actually result in damage and or even kills. First strike went to an enemy Oval 74 that just killed one of my T-62 buddies, he must be close by, there he is, and watch this, he actually can shoot a little bit through snow. And where is he? There we go, beautiful. And that was actually a hull break because we hit the breach. So that was the first strike. But I'm on my way into this position and this is so difficult and so dangerous because enemy tanks can appear uh, around there from everywhere, literally. And it is this church. And then we can see an enemy tank that looks like a Leopard and engine. And we reload, we aim for the roof and we go straight through the gun mantlet. Beautiful, beautiful. Double strike. And so now we are in position. We're technically behind enemy lines and we're just waiting and we're listening, which is much more important in this position. So I knocked down this tree, I uh, try to keep those trucks alive and we hear the next customer. Now watch this. I don't have quite the gun depression, only 5 degrees of gun depression, although 85 degrees of gun elevation. Does he see me? Now he stops and I can't resist. Beautiful. And it's those one-shot kills that are so magic. Why? Because this tank doesn't have AP. It doesn't have APCR. It doesn't have APDS like a lot of other SPAs or most SPAs in the game. It actually fires APCDC rounds. And those long barreled 70, uh, 57 millimeter guns, they have a high rate of fire to fire, for intents and purposes, APCDC rounds with 20 grams of TNT filler. And uh, when you hit properly, you pen two of them at the same time, and you have eight in the double clip. So this is very lethal, especially at this battle rating, you know, a lot of the main battle tanks are weakly armored. They try to be quick, they try to be nimble, they try to have a stabilizer, and they can be very dangerous to you. You can get hull broken, uh, no deal. But yeah, there we can see you have the advantage with the side shots, shot trapping, it all works so beautifully. And we're still in this spot. And we're simply waiting. And as you can see on the minimap, we have all three objectives. And so I am in the vicinity to support C a little bit and to protect B. There we can see an enemy tank. Come on, where is he? And straight through the back of the turret. Beautiful. M48, A2, G, A2, no problem for us. I hear uh, yet another tank, and now the question is, where is he? He's so close by, I clearly can hear him. Um, where the hell is he? Where is he? So the funny thing is, if you look closely, that's not him. But we kill him anyway. I have now two shells in the clip. I need to make them count. I don't have the capacity to now spread him around. And so I make them count instead of the type 89 that tried to come for a range kill. The question is, does that guy that's coming around that corner actually notice me? No, not in time, mate. KPZ 70, no problem with a side shot to the hull. Um, the side shot to the turret would have been a problem due to the spaced armor. And now we have already 7 kills. Did I do something magic here? Was this the greatest skill game that you've ever saw? No. I just had a position. And I just had APHE from auto cannons. And I'm not done yet. <clears throat> so there is an ally coming in. B is now uncontested. But one of my teammates is coming in. 
we're in full map control here, okay? We just have the advantage, although nobody is in the vicinity of A. So I expect it to fall in a few seconds or a few minutes. The question obviously is, when is it time to move? Because the enemies just came so quickly, in such quick succession, that I thought to myself, well, maybe there are coming more and it is always when I move that I get caught in the open. What I actually tried to test with this tank is, as I said in the beginning, the proximity fuse high explosive shells. Because they make the difference to the um, ZSU-57 too. And also, I want to kill some aircraft, right? So now my team is further advancing. They just wanna win harder instead of defending. And so they are spawn pushing. And as predicted, A is now falling to the enemy team. Now where to approach the enemy, where to position myself. First I thought that this would be a really great ambush position versus tanks and planes alike. But, you know, my team is so far ahead that it doesn't really matter. I drop a artillery chance, uh, artillery drop just by chance, you know, just uh, have a look at what's coming out. And most of the action seems to be gone now. So this is now the end game scenario. From this point onwards, we can expect jets, helicopters, prop planes, whatever. And so I was really interested in killing them. But if there aren't any, well, you know, I can't really shoot at them. Also, the problem with that ZSC-57 II is when you shoot that aircraft. First of all, you're distracted, you're an easy target for both the aircraft and tanks. But furthermore, the gun sound is so characteristic, everybody knows exactly where you are, what you are, and uh, they just can't prepare, whereas you just give your position away. So there we can see our first custom of the day. And that was some bad shooting, but, you know, it's a really, really fast jet. On the other hand, the surprising thing is that with all two or all shell types that you have, you have a muscle velocity of a thousand meters per second. So like a long 88, right? The proximity fuse high explosive shells have slightly faster muscle velocity with a thousand and thirteen, something like this. Not that it makes a difference, but it's just nice to know, right? So I'm now climbing the hill. And I think to myself, well, what to do right now? And then I heard a gun sound that is fairly similar. That's an Orbel 74. Okay, uh, I have no idea where he is, but he is in that direction. There I saw the muscle flash. I'm switching now belt. And the Orbel 74 is just finishing off the teammates that are pushing harder than me. So patience versus those frontline campers. There I briefly saw the gun barrel and we one shot him and again it's Hullbreak. So sweet, so nice. Kill number 8. Beautiful. And now I'm getting into his position and I'm just reloading the belt. So we have not seen the tank yet from A and I doubt that the Orwell was the guy that just did it to then uh, go back and into this position. It's possible but my game experience tells me otherwise. So I'm just waiting here. And obviously I'm waiting still for aircraft. Because whenever I'm in a tank, you know, there are 20 aircraft in the air. And they all try to kill me. Most of them really succeed in the first run, but that's a different story. So when I then play an SPA, no bloody aircraft. Yeah. So now let's observe this auto squad guy um, a little bit further down south and he tries to go for A. That's very interesting because he can be a little bit of an indicator. So first we spot here the aircraft, but he's really, really far away and I don't want to open fire. In the meantime, the OF-40 has killed my uh, auto squad guy. Usually the green guy is always the first one to die. <coughs> aside from me obviously so I don't want to alert here the enemy chat because it can be the case that he has overlooked me that he's not really watching out for me or for ground uh, vehicles and instead he tries to kill you know other aircraft but this is what the type 87 is I guess better at or more efficient at the moment I hear a tank behind me and oh god that must be the OF-40 
There he is. I shoot switch the belt. That's the only way I can do it. I'm lacking the gun depression, but he ignored me. Quick shot into Coppola. Ninth kill. I love APHE. So, that was my anti-tank adventures in that ZSU 57 too. Now it's just a case of trying to survive the game. Now, currently the enemy team has managed to stop the ticket bleed, but one of my teammates is already on C. Whatever you want to talk about your team, very often you notice your team only when they are dying in front of you, when they are letting you down. But for all intents and purposes, I have to say that my team was fighting really well here. My team really went for the caps, my team really also killed the enemy team quite efficiently. So I think that I have to say this here as, you know, a little bit of an appreciation. Which you rarely hear on the internet, right? Because, oh, you were let down and uh, you had it all and then your team just failed you, etc. No, not this time. My team played nicely and it just had a very nice spot and a very nice tank for the job. So let's have a brief look at the post battle results and then we can see for quick 9 kills, no assists, no capture points, 62,000 civil lines, 7,500 modification research points and a third of our total civil line income went down to achievements like the Heavy Metal Hero Award and the Survivor Award as well as some other achievements. That was a really nice battle in the WZ-305 in the anti-tank role. I tried to get some footage with uh, that tank in the anti-aircraft role. But up until then, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.